Good morning. I'm taking a family portrait of three very famous funny men back here and their wives and children and in-laws and grandchildren. They're all out for a picnic. And if you look real closely, I think you'll recognize the three men I'm talking about. They're the Three Stooges. All right, everybody pose. Now, we'll get one picture here. Line up. We'll get a picture. Everybody get organized. Squeeze in. It's Jack Linkletter on the go. Sometimes an actor can be so typed and stylized that we never really get a chance to know what they're really like. Especially true if it happens to be a slapstick comic who's maybe perhaps portrayed a single character for over 26 years. And this is true of any of the Three Stooges. We're asking several questions this morning. One, are these idols of our children really madmen? Secondly, are they as zany as they seem? This is a lineup. We have Curly Joe, Mo, and Larry. What are your real names? So you're Larry. Larry. Larry what? Larry Fine. Mo Howard. And uh, Joe Dorita. Well, fellas, I have searched you as far as I could, and I've looked all over the picnic baskets, and there are no pies, so maybe I'm safe, huh? You we deliberately no insist on no pies at any of our picnics because we might start a two-reel comedy. Well, we don't want that today because we want to find out what you really like, if, if this is at all possible. After I think 26 it is. years of doing the same type of zany characters, has this rubbed off on your personalities a little, do you think? Well, I don't know. You have to look at this to tell, don't you? Well, how do you live at home? Do you, uh... I, uh... When you don't like the spinach, do you throw it at your wife? Oh, no, no. This, this uh, I could never do. I, I would say that there's quite a serious element in the home life of the lads, uh, even to the point of taking a lot of time out for writing and things like that, which is a very serious job. Mm -hmm. uh, not until the camera is on us do we really go into what we term our characters. Now, one thing before I get into what your life is more, like, more or less like, uh, I did a telethon with these gentlemen a few weeks ago, and they kept getting money uh, being donated if they would show that they didn't have wigs and that they really had this this zany hairdos Where did these uh, things originate? Do you know Curly Joe? I haven't been with them that long. They can tell you. Yeah, and you don't have that much hair I either. I just comb it. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine started with curls many many years ago and as a youngster I had to fight my way through to, on my way to school and finally I got discouraged and uh, went to a friend's house took his mother's scissors and just wrapped these curls all around when I looked in the mirror I said, I remembered later on exactly what I looked like. That's very so, interesting. Uh, well, Curly Joe, you are a heavy. You, you can yeah. play comedy and you're still a heavy. I have been. I have been. What were you doing before you joined the group? This group? Well, I, I was uh, raised in show business. I, my mother and father are in it. I've been in it since I was seven and a half. And uh, I was done everything. Vaudeville, uh, Nightclubs, tent shows, tent shows, medicine shows, everything. out through the, the Midwest. Every, oh, I've he been around. He tried some of the medicine on his hair. Yeah, See I the mean, result? Yeah, I know. It burned <laughs> the ends off. Well, you fellas have had quite a success story because uh, it's been really, what, the last four or five years of television bringing back your, your old movies that have created such a tremendous success for you, gentlemen? Well, may I straighten this situation out? Uh, we finished a 24-year contract at Columbia on January 1st, 1958. In August of 1958, these old comedies were put on television. So actually, we, we were out of action, and gratefully, because we've been working pretty hard for about seven months, and then it happened. And now the, the rains don't stop. You, the fan mail and the money and everything else seems to the be coming money, right in. The money the fan mail. Well, you know, of course, you fellas are identified with the fingers and the eyes and the pies and all that, and I'm not going to get you going wild. But I would like to find out whether the parents' criticism of it, how you've reacted to that, and a demonstration of some of these things in slow motion. This is Mrs. Howard. And you're Mo's wife. And uh, let's start over here on the far left with Paul and tell us who these are. Well, uh, this is my son, Paul. Who goes to UCLA. I'll talk to him. And next to him, my daughter, Joan. And her son, Jeffrey. And my other grandson, Michael. Hi, how are you? Freckle face? Boy, look at all those freckles. Uh, how long have you been married now? Uh, 34 years. Boy, that's some while, isn't it? And, yes, 34 wonderful years. Traveled with the Stooges wherever they've gone? Yes, every place they went, we went with them. Now, what are um, Moe's outside interests? We always think of him as a crazy, wild-haired guy. Uh, what does he do when he's not on the movies? And the well, films? I'd say he's just like the average, normal American father. And uh, he's particularly interested in children and handicapped children. Mo is past president of the Spastic Children's Guild. And... Uh, That's interesting. And, yes. and uh, entertaining children. He's also uh, 
uh, very interested in working with the handicapped ones. Yes, handicapped and other children. And his own grandchildren, I may, I'm sure. Let, let me move down here, if I may. Uh, now, when you uh, were a young boy and your dad was sort of playing a wild character, what did you think? Were you ever embarrassed by the, this, this no. madman that you seem to have as a father? I wasn't embarrassed at all. In fact, I was proud, really. Did you ever want to grow up and be a comedian? I tried it, basically. I used to get with the kids, and we used to beat each other around a little bit, but he, he sort of sleeps, eats, feeds, and breathes uh, comedy. I, I don't feel that I really got the old punch, but I've uh, admired him, and I feel that art is my field. Well, that's very good. How about uh, as far as you were concerned? Did you ever want to grow up and be a comedian? Oh, I think uh, not. not? <laughs> I'm not the type. This is uh, Larry's family, and this is Mrs. Fine. How long have you had that name, Mrs. Fine? Uh, for th over 33 years. Well, that's a commentary on a side of Hollywood that we don't read about in the papers. All we read about are divorces. Um, what about the, you meeting your husband in show business? What were the circumstances? Uh, we were in a kitty act together. What did you do? Outside of Philadelphia. I sang, I danced. And uh, he was, and what, he a violin pl player yes, at the time? Yes, he was a violinist. And uh, what about at home now? Uh, does he bring home the crazy acts? Uh, are you a, still a show business critic? Do you, uh, yes, I am a critic. You give him your opinion? Yes, all the time. What is it? Is he pretty good? Is he pretty funny? After I get through with him, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, the power behind the throne. And next to you is your daughter. My daughter. Hi, Jess. Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. And uh, she is married to quite a very talented actor, uh, announcer, Don Lamont, who uh, is the host for the, uh, the uh, Three Stooges show in Los Angeles. Hey, 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 wait, 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 wait a minute. What are you doing? I thought this, no violence. This well, was, I was supposed just, to be a picnic. And... I was just showing the boys the things that we're going to eliminate. You know this eliminate. This, what do yes. you mean? You're gonna no more violence? No more violence Ever? in our in our new in our new series. There will be no violence, the, the type of violence that the t people will take exception to. Now, for instance, well, wait. This, I want to hear more about this. I, I want to pause for one minute, though. We're back at Plummer Park in Hollywood, California, with, with the, the Three Stooges and the Bird Watchers and yes. all the relatives of uh, Mo and Larry. I'm sorry, your relatives couldn't make it. My family's in Baltimore. My mother and sisters and everything. I want to wave at them. Hello, uh, hello, everybody yeah. in ba uh, Baltimore. Hello. <laughs> Very good. Now, you just said something sort of startling, uh, Mo, and that was that you were going to cut violence out of your act. Well, even if there is an isolated incident of where a mother may object to her child watching then for that reason alone, we want to eliminate the violence because in the new series that we're doing is for complete family consumption. But hasn't this been the, the whole charm of the Three Stooges, uh, the hitting in the head and then... Well, we thought, we thought it was, and we worked along those lines, but of course those were for the theatrical distribution. You see, we feel now the television is going into the homes. And that might make the difference. There's two and three year old children that never saw those pictures before that see them well, now. Well, you don't really hurt each other. No. No. no Can you show, for instance, now what do you do when you wrestle his nose here? What well, look, actually. His nose. What do you mean, wrestle? Well, <laughs> well here's you know. what he means. Now, ordinarily, someone might think there's an element of violence which is created in my expression, but actually, my. And my, his expression. Now, hold your head still. <laughs> now, my finger actually winds around loosely, but in the speed it's done with. Like this finger thing here, I never go near the eyes. It's way up here. But in the speed of it, it looks like it is in the way he takes it. Now with Joe, I may grab him by the ear and look like I'm twisting it. His expression of pain and mine of viciousness builds up to the point, but actually I don't, I wouldn't hurt this he lad for anything. Oh, no. He wouldn't hurt me. No. I might give him a little smack like that. Now that Doesn't, didn't hurt. No. You see, we're on the picnic and he's having it. Uh, yeah, he's having all the fun <laughs> demonstrations. <laughs> a good one, Joe. When you are in public, I imagine most people expect you to be going around hitting everybody. But this is this is just your character, and you're eliminating this, and you still feel you can be funny and tell jokes and have fun and create situations well, without uh, this. Just uh, one word: uh, the, there will be violence in the pictures, but it will be done in cartoon. Let's not call it violence. Well, there no, will no. be an element of, of slapstick movement. Slapstick fighting. Slapstick right. oh, fighting. That's our identity. So what, what this is, now, so we get, I think we've confused myself and the audience. You fellows are going to host a new series of, your cart of cartoons of the Stooges doing these things. Right. In animation, yes. And you will have situation comedies that you will reenact, right. but just funny incidents. Right. That's correct. 
A comical one. Comical one. <laughs> you got it, Jack. Yeah, you I think it. I got it straight. I hope the audience has. Now, what about uh, some of the things in the past, since there were these wild things? Did any uh, of the scenes backfire on you? Did you ever have big I, mistakes? I oh. did want to explain one thing for Larry. Of course, I feel that I can explain this better because I was an onlooker at the time. In one sequence where there's some gangsters, incidentally, Lucille Ball was in that picture with she us. She was a gangster? No, no, no she was gangster's ma, yeah. they call it. At any rate, there was to be a fight between Larry on the close-up, he and another lad, a gangster. And in the scene, in preparing it, they measured off, and Larry stayed about two inches away from the limit of this man's fist. So and when his arm was fully that's extended... Right, Larry would take it. Now watch. See? Now... Larry's feet were marked off with chalk where he must stand, and so was this gangster's. And then they put our stand-ins in, he went and lit a cigarette, and nobody had noticed that Larry stepped about four inches forward of his mark. And when he let this go, show him your new tooth, Larry. <laughs> You're not kidding. Right out of his mouth. Knocked the tooth right out. I think it was his first teeth. <laughs> did you leave it in? Or did you cut it out? No, I guess that it was got cut out. It had to be cut out, the blood and everything. <laughs> <laughs> and there were many uh, other instances that backfired, like uh, no. in a carpenter routine where uh, Curly Joe cut the table in half. He was cutting a board, but he cut the table at the same time. When I stepped to get the thing, the table collapsed and the ribs landed along the edge and a few of them were cracked. But not... In my mind, not wanting to do the scene over, I, I spoke my four lines and then passed out. <laughs> See? Well, you know, you, you guys certainly have had a lot of fun in, in your, uh, your act and, and over the years. And I think there's a very interesting uh, analytical approach that you fellows have given to your success. Uh, you were telling me how you think that the public has accepted you and kids because you're cartoon characters. Yes. In fact, uh, one of my grandsons made mention of the fact when I asked him why he had shifted from Popeye to watching the Three Stooges, he said, well, we all like the Stooges better. And I said, why? He said, well, you do some of the things that Popeye does. You look like cartoons, but sometime we could get to shake hands with you. So you're real. It adds another dimension to your character. And that's correct. Well, gentlemen, I thank all thank of you. You, you are Jack. fine gentlemen. Thank you. On and off the screen. And Jack. I'm sure that my children and probably my grandchildren will enjoy you too.